You are listening to the Pencil and Paper Podcast Network. Visit PencilandPaperProductions.Podbean.com to find more great podcasts. Welcome to the Palace of Mega Pixels. This is Super Mega Crash Brothers Turbo! Welcome to Super Mega Crash Brothers Turbo. I'm your host, Stephen White. With me, as always, is my co-host, Lacia Finley. Oh, happy Monday. How are you? I'm, I'm doing good. This is, a, this is a rough week, you know, to say the least. We had a lot of uh, drama in the world. Did not, re- not really video games. We had, we had some good video game news, I, I suppose, of which we're going to talk about later. But non-video mm-hmm. game news, it was just... Spider-Man, week, eh? you know, Spider-Man. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. I've been uh, reading some tweet threads about that and getting mm. terrified. <laughs> y- yeah, you know, I, it's a big point of contention for a lot of people. I don't want to. Like, I got, I got upset, and then after some reflection, I was like, should I really be this upset? I mean, look, look. I do, I do love the movies. I do love mm-hmm. what they've done. But when you start seeing these people who are just like, yeah, anger and pitchforks and fire, uh, and then you look at what you're thinking, you're like, holy shit, I'm one of those people. I don't want to be one of those people. You know, I do want, I do want things to work out. And Mm -hmm. as of this recording, I have heard inklings that it's working out. Yeah, I think with a grain of salt. I, it almost kind of feels like they were bullied into okay, let's go back to the drawing board here. Like, I mean, but I, I don't know. I'm I just think they should. The outside. I mean, regardless of what I've heard, and and by the time you know this comes out, there may be some big news, and everybody's like, oh yeah, and it could have fallen apart again. It could have been mm-hmm. resolved. Who knows? But as well, of they, right so now, you might have thought it was resolved. Yeah. Well, I yeah. mean, I think in all honesty. Can you blame them for playing hardball? I I don't know like a lot of like the past stuff. Just uh, reading Cliff's notes on what's been happening, of course, and then you know where we thought it was completely decided. Disney wanted fifty fifty. Sony's mm-hmm. like hell no, and then they couldn't reach an agreement. And Sony's like fine, screw you. I'm keeping it. I'm taking my ball and going home. Sure, but then it almost kind of feels like I mean. Disney has such a monopoly that it's kind of like I feel like they were getting bullied knowing that social media and everything was going to blow up. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I have I have a hard time, you know, with it just because you know how I feel about large corporations that just swoop up every single thing. So it's right. kind of like, ah, uh, Sony knows this is their money maker as far as like movies go, dude, and mm-hmm. it's. I could understand them not wanting to give up like that much of it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But I, mean, I also understand that the the MCU version is the ones that people really enjoy, and that's mm-hmm. what they want to see. So it's it's a it's a tough spot. It's a tough spot yeah. to be in. I mean, I'll be honest with you. Just looking at the deal they had, I can understand why Disney would probably want more of a cut. But at the same time, well, sure. <laughs> but at the same time. Do they really need the money? <laughs> oh, not at all. Not at all. I mean, like, they could have easily just accepted whatever, you know, Sony had offered, and they would have lived the life of luxury as they have been thus far, yeah. you know, if it was for the fans. But, um, I mean, and greed I, kills a lot of things, man. It greed does. kills a lot of things. I mean, I think, I think the new deal from, from, again, bits and pieces that I've heard, granted, we're going from 5% to 50%, but. I also feel like they are trying to get more control of the character. So kind of reining mm-hmm. him back in, which I can understand because if I had my way, I would have him back over at Marvel. Only because I want I want all my characters in the same home, nightly, you right. know, nicely fit, tight and just packed together. That way I can see all my favorite characters play along with each other, you know? Cuz that was right. the beauty of like the Avengers Infinity War and Endgame. All these characters that I love so much, they're all there. Mm-hmm. You know, it's exciting. 
So and I feel like Disney realized that they kind of got written into that kind of hole where it's mm-hmm. like, what are you going to do with it when you can't use any of our stuff? Yeah. And that's where Disney just be, needs to be like, OK, OK, fine, <laughs> fine. Here I feel like go. they were building up to the bully and uh, from a long time ago. Sure. Like, yeah, you know, I mean, it, we just keep incorporating him in and making this his timeline. What, what, what are you going to do? Another origin story now? Eh? Yeah, and you no know? one wants to see that. I'm one of them. I, I'll yeah, say I mean, flat out. I'm I not mean, doing that. That again. and Batman. I think we get it. We get yeah. how he became Spider-Man. <laughs> how many it. times do you need to see Bruce Wayne's parents shot? I've seen it mm-hmm. one too many times. Every iteration yep. is like, my God, I got it. Yeah, we get it. I got it. Yeah. Pick a different part of his life, would you? Like, yeah, please. I think that's the reason why I get hate for saying I liked Ben Affleck's Batman. I'm like, but it was like a different part of Batman to see for crying out loud. Yeah, like, but, but. We got an older version a little bit later on, you know. But we still saw his parents get shot. <laughs> sure, but. Martha. <laughs> Oh yeah, oh, yeah, it's all it's it's all ridiculous at this point. But yeah, yeah. Well, well, I hope it works out. Is is all I'm saying. I hope fans are happy. I hope companies mm-hmm. don't feel screwed. I mean, I know I'm trying to put us in a perfect world, but oh, and before before I move on, I just wanted to mention they the Disney as of we're recording this, they're doing their big D23 Expo, so they're showing off all their new stuff. Mainly right now, they're doing their big Disney Plus promotion because that oh, comes yeah, out in November. Yeah. So they've been dropping trailers for new movies, new TV shows, and stuff like that that's going to be on the platform. Mm-hmm. And the biggest the biggest thing that I saw, because I saw they they showcased a trailer for Lady and the Tramp, which I was like, oh, cool. That looks it looked like it'd be pretty good. I'm surprised it's going to the streaming service versus theaters, but it, maybe they see it as not as much of a moneymaker. So I can understand yeah. that. <clears throat> and then they show like a new Star Wars, Mandalorian series trailer and i'm like oh my god yes i'm in for that and then i i find this sizzle reel of all the disney plus and it's to showcase everything you'll get with disney plus and i I was like i all i saw on the thumbnail was the simpsons was like oh the simpsons are gonna they're gonna rip them a new one again right no no they took you through this spiel of nostalgia and things you love with this music mm-hmm. about believe. Look what's here. Come with us. And I was like, God, if I wasn't sold on this already, you sons of bitches just did it. Because they just reel you in. It's like, you love this stuff, yeah. don't you? Yes, you do. Yes. Yeah, this you is like crack it. for you, man. You just want to taste, don't you? You just want to taste. So, like, you love Toy oh, Story. My. You love Aladdin. You love The Simpsons. Uh-huh. You love Star Wars. You That's why I've been doing no looking into it. Oh yeah, it's I don't I don't need another streaming service. They wrote it's it's, it's becoming I'm not even going to look. Well, nope. the 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 reason I'm actually kind of considering it now is because I actually took kind of a slight dive into Hulu because we were watching um The X-Files and we couldn't watch mm-hmm. the last two seasons without Hulu. So I thought Yeah. Okay, well we'll do like the the free 30 day trial or whatever and kind of check it out and then i start looking through it and i'm like holy shit this is where all my other shows have gone from all these other platforms that i'm missing mm-hmm. they're here so now they I'm had just- a lot more too and then everyone started their own streaming service and mm-hmm. started taking their shows back and stuff like that so there's a lot more original programming i've noticed that hulu is doing which i feel like is the only way you're gonna kind of win these wars right now mm-hmm. is if you've got original programming that people really want and there there are a few shows on there that i've looked at and i was like i've kind of wanted to watch that and now it's there and i'm like ah, i'll send you a couple this. recommendations man mm-hmm. So while you've got it, at least considering they're doing like a bundle service with Hulu and Disney Plus, the only thing I, c- I could do without is ESPN. I don't want that. You can mm. keep that shit somewhere else. Give me a bundle where I don't have ads with Hulu and I can get Disney Plus and then you take the ESPN away. I'm happy. I don't need that. Right. So I probably do it. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, I it's really it. probably not that much more expensive to add it on, right? I mean, like, the Disney Plus services, I'm not trying to promote it. Keep this in mind. I'm not getting paid by yeah. Disney, but I'm just not saying. Not an ad. It's it's <laughs> not as expensive as you would assume because you, people are paying like 15 bucks for Netflix now. And Disney's over mm-hmm. here like 6 
and you're like, oh. And that's about the sweet spot for Hulu too. It's like six or seven yeah. ninety nine a month. They for didn't, just like your basic. Yeah, but they didn't say know. anything about ads. And then they're showing you. You get to watch The Simpsons. You get to watch all the Marvel movies. You get to watch all the Disney movies. You get all this stuff. You want it, right? Mm-hmm. Six ninety nine. That's not a bad price, right? And it's then they'll rope price. you in, and then they'll jack up the price at some point. I'm oh, sure, of course they but. Will. I digress. It doesn't matter. Yes. <laughs> uh, so what have you been playing? <clears throat> uh, it was an FMV week for me. I think I mentioned last week at the end that I was about to dive into a newer FMV that was a sequel to one I had played before. Mm-hmm. Um, it was called Visitor, but then the one I played, Visitor 2, it was the you know Chinese independent company where I was excited because I knew it was just going to be played way over the top and all this kind of stuff. I can't recommend it. I'm really sad. Oh. Like I, it was all kind of coming back to me, like a lot of the problems with the first one. Mm-hmm. And maybe I had um, stars in my eyes because I think one of the developers was actually in the stream when I was playing the first one. So kind of helping me out but the gameplay is just it's over my head let's put it this way um maybe someone else could pick it up and not have as hard of a time but it's played almost exactly like a point and click game so you know they set the scene they're going to a cabin um it's the same cops I'll call them cops from the first one um a murder happens and now you have to figure out who had done it and it's a basic screen of whatever evidence that you might have at the time and video evidence from either interviewing people already or um, let's say I think it was at a hotel so maybe the uh, security camera footage will be put in there but you get started with so many things and the way to unlock videos is to drag two things over like you would in a point and click game to maybe merge them and find new evidence and it could be two to four things that you put together And with having like 20 things initially and not really understanding what it wants you to do, it took me forever to unlock a video. I mean, there's, you can't just like bully it like you would a regular point and click because you would just drag everything over one item until something connected. If you were just completely stuck and you'd be like, well, I don't know why those two things go together, but fine. The Mm -hmm. algorithm is two things go together. But when you can have up to four things that need to connect before it unlocks something, I just found it a little bit too hard and again English isn't the first language which is not a deal breaker they have captions you can understand it well enough but after about an hour of trying to figure out what the hell it wants me to do I got really frustrated and then trying to look up a walkthrough they were all only in Chinese so Mm. or at least the ones at the date of me playing it so I had to do a really janky version of trying to put it in like Google Translate, hoping that maybe I'd understand enough of it to like try to proceed. Um, And I just couldn't do it. And it was too frustrating. And I found it too hard. um, Not really explaining like why I need to put these items together. Um, So I'm going to say at the very least, it's over my head and I'm not going to return back to it, which breaks my heart because I think it could have been a a good game had they just simplified the gameplay a little bit or gave more hints or something along the way. Mm. Um, So that was disappointing. So I'm not going back to that one. But I did start telling lies yesterday. So, which is when it was released, but for you, Friday, when Mm -hmm. you're listening to this, it released on Friday, Sam Barlow's newest FMV. Um, People might have heard of her story now Mm -hmm. that FMVs here lately seem to be picking up really good traction. Like I'm even seeing like AAA companies doing FMVs now, which it's a really weird thing to live through when they were looked down upon as a medium that now they're being sought after. It's like PlayStation has its own exclusive called Erica, which I'm going to be diving into later. Mm -hmm. I think it's more of an interactive movie, but still, yes, kids, Netflix didn't invent it. Um, (laughs) Although they might have been a reason why it's been revived here and people have been looking at it a little harder. Sure. Um, But it's great. It's great. Like, I'm still a little confused, but it's the way the gameplay is. Like, you're sitting down in front of a computer screen, and that's exactly what it looks like. And you have a search engine, and you're going through these videos that were filmed of these people, but without their knowledge. So it's almost like you're getting Skype video. So let's say you and I are FaceTiming, and we just think we're having this conversation. Well, as you're putting in keywords in the search engine, the video will pop up of you saying that word or or something to that effect. Mm-hmm. And you can watch the video. So you're getting one side of the conversation. But it's interesting because there will be a lot of pauses, like how right now you're pausing to look at me because I'm talking. 
So we would just be staring at you having all your little micro expressions and everything to what's being told to you. And it makes it kind of interesting because now you're trying to figure out what is it he's reacting to and try to figure out keywords that the other side might be saying to get the other side of the conversation. So you're never going to have a side by side. And I can't really tell you like who plays what, because even finding out characters' names can be a spoiler for this game. <laughs> I think I just now, after like an hour and a half, two hours of doing searches on it, I'm starting to really find out what the meat of the story is and trying mm-hmm. to pull on that thread. But there's so much video. And it's it's just it was presented really well. It plays exactly like her story. But at least in that case, in her story, she knew she was being recorded, right? It was right. uh she was in the police station giving testimony or whatever. Um, but with this one, they have no idea. And there's four main characters, but you the other ones kind of get come into play at eventually. It's really, it's really neat. It's really neat. It feels like it's gonna be a slow burn at first, but the more you start to uncover, I think I'm starting to appreciate why they did just one side of the conversation at a time because it's made it more interesting watching the actors with how are they getting yelled at Mm -hmm. is it a sexy conversation you know like it's 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 interesting and I definitely recommend it if you like if you like FMVs especially Sam Barlow I think has done a great job I haven't finished one scenario yet I don't think there's more than one ending obviously I don't think you have to see everything to beat the game Mm -hmm. Although I wouldn't see why you wouldn't want to keep trying to find all of the videos sure. to get the full scope of the story. And I think it's very simple. One woman comes into her house, sits down for the computer screen. So you always see a faint reflection of her face in the screen the entire time. Mm-hmm. And I think it's either triggered by uncovering the story or not. She might actually even respond to something in her environment. Just when you think she's like just going to be background. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's really well done. It's really well done. And I I, I don't want to say much more because I don't want to spoil it for anyone who might. Next week, I might have even more to tell you um, once I finish the story, but it plays really cool and I'm I'm digging it so far. So Sam Barlow, GG again, man. All right. I'm digging it. Digging it. Excellent. And it's like big name actors that have credits too. So like... We're starting to see like the quality, just the bar for FMVs mm-hmm. getting raised, and it's it's a really cool time right now for games. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. But that's it. That's what I think I've played this week. All right. What have you been playing? Well, not as much as I, I normally do. You know, I'm always trying to to keep up. But uh, I did play a little bit more of Detroit Become Human. I feel like I've got. I think I did actually look it up just out of curiosity, like a walkthrough, just to kind of get a breakdown of where I was in the story. And I think mm-hmm. maybe I have, I guess, what would be considered chapters, 10 chapters left. So okay. things are starting to ramp up and things are starting to, to unfold, but I haven't quite reached the pinnacle in the end yet. So I'm getting mm-hmm. there. And uh, yeah. still, still kind of playing blind, which, again, highly recommended because it's... It's more fun not to know what we're doing, you know, which way the story's Mm going to go. And I think I've corrected myself with the uh, the cop, your your partner detective by played by Clancy Brown, because there for a moment he was like despising of me, and I was like, shit, what did I do wrong? Because I was I thought I was trying to be polite and friendly, just talking to him, and then I started noticing you don't have to ask him about everything. Because some things he seems to take, you know, lightly and he's like, oh, you know, friendly. And then other things he takes offense to. And I was like, OK, so yeah, be cautious of what I ask him about. And then I finally got him back to where he's OK with me. Yeah, he was the hardest one, I feel like, through my first gameplay, too, to keep him, like, friends with me. I'm like, damn it, dude. What do you want me to say? What do you want me to say? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. so mad at me. Yeah. He's the hardest one, or at least I found it to be, too. Yeah, I think when uh, the very first time I took note of that was when we were sitting in the police precinct and we're kind of getting to know him and you got to observe his desk. So you gather all mm-hmm. these clues about what you can ask him about. And I thought, well, I'll just talk to him about everything. Some things he wanted to talk about. Other things he'd be like, up yours and i was like oh okay sorry i shouldn't have asked yeah. so Just trying to be nice man yeah so i i've i've learned to to take him a little bit more tempered like be very careful about what i'm saying what i'm doing so i'm mm-hmm. hoping he'll stay friendly with me I, I think i'm doing all right 
Yeah. Uh, and then I also played a little bit of Mortal Kombat just because I had some time to kill and thought, I don't want to get into anything too deep. So I got to try out the Night Wolf uh, DLC and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And, I, you know, he's he plays pretty good, I suppose. You know, he's, nice. he's, he's not a bad character. I just... I feel like a lot of the stuff that still needs to be unlocked to have all these coins and I'm getting to this free to play problem, you know, in in certain games like Town Builders where you have all these coins, but yet you have nothing to buy them or or nothing to use them on. Yeah. Yet you need souls and hearts and all this stuff to really unlock all the other stuff. And I'm like, well, I'm not buying anything. I'm not going to do that. So if I wanted to, I could take all of my coins and put them into this time vortex in the chest or in the crypt and refill all the chests that I've unlocked. But then I will have no coins to buy them or open them. But even if I did, yeah, yeah, Yeah. I'm starting to see flaws in this game when it comes to this crap. But even if I did that... There's still going to be the issue of will I even get anything worth a damn because most of the chests that I started to reopen were nothing but artwork and the occasional costume. Mm-hmm. I was like, well, screw this. <laughs> Done. So, yeah. Yeah. But we'll, we'll but ta- I'll talk a little bit more soon, about it. Right? Yeah. yeah, we'll talk more about that <clears throat> in a little bit. Right now, let's talk about some news. Let's do it. Now, granted, we have a lot of Gamescom. Well, I don't want to say a lot. We have Gamescom news to kind of go over, and mm-hmm. we'll get to that toward the end. But right now, we're just going to talk about actual news news that may have happened uh, throughout the week that was not Gamescom related. The first thing that I want to bring up is there seem to be a, a lot of apologies coming out lately from uh, certain companies for saying or doing things and a lot of saying i guess it would be the uh, appropriate thing here the first one actually comes from respawn uh mm-hmm. they made changes to apex legends iron crown event and apparently when they they announced it and they put it out there it was a lot of uh new skins and everything but there was a huge grind behind it and pricey loot box mechanics and all this other stuff so fans were outraged and they took to reddit and they were just like ah how dare you do this and so respawn decided okay we need to fix this we're gonna go and fix this they went on to reddit and apologized for their wrongdoing and said they were going to fix everything however fans being the rabid sort people that they are began tearing into respawn calling them liars and frauds and the like and the devs fought back. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, they started, mm-hmm. point, like the, I think it was the community manager of Respawn pointed out the hypocrisy of the thread, saying that they came to communicate change to the game, made, um, were trying to make amends for their mistakes, and then they got personally attacked. Then, after they attacked back, these same fans called them immature. When they chose to defend like themselves. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, it's the fans can't handle it coming back at them. No, no. They have this customer is always right nonsense bull crap that's in their head. Like, I'm you're not allowed to talk back to me. How immature is that? I'm supposed to sit here being entitled and complain. Yeah. We can shit on you all day. It's a bully tactic, man. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm human, too. I don't like being talked to that way. Mm-hmm. Uh, but anyway, the. Uh, CEO of Respawn, Vince Zampella. I don't know why. I keep looking at his name and I want to keep saying Zampanella or something like it. Zampella. 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 I don't know why I want to add ends in there. Anyway, he issued an apology via Twitter stating that he stands behind the team and supports their decision to defend themselves against the toxic comments, but he did say that they should not contribute to the problem either and that they must do better and lead by example. And like I said, I mean, with with as much hate speech that goes on anymore, especially on Twitter and Reddit, I don't blame them. I, I you know, they work especially with gamers too right now. Right? Like, man, come on. I mean, they literally got on there and were just like, "Look, we we screwed up. We're sorry. We're going to fix it." 
and they still mm-hmm. got shit on. It wasn't like, oh, dear. it's you know, like those same idiot fans who got so angry at, what was it, Insomniac? Because they weren't putting oh, in the, the spider suit that they wanted right away. You stupid. I don't want it. this Spider-Man suit. I want this other Spider-Man suit. You know, you're not Game having to ruined. pay for any of this. They're not making you but buy a thing. It's why you almost can't say what you're going to do at all. Yeah. And then they were just like. It doesn't come out when they want it to or something. Yeah. You're just going to have, you know. Uh, but I mean, so I, don't, I, I applauded <laughs> Insomniac just for their, they were just like, yeah, here you go. You know, we were going to surprise you, you with it. You here. Yeah. yeah. Here you go. Just take it. And then what did they do? Oh, we love you. Oh, you're so awesome. It's like, no, it's too late. Screw you. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, anyway, yeah. Uh, another apology last week came from Toyota, of all people, after the company's UK Twitter account responded to a tweet asking why there were no Toyota vehicles in the upcoming game Need for Speed Heat. The response <clears throat> essentially said that the company does not promote illegal street racing. And then directed said Twitter account to the game GT Sport, which does feature Toyotas, and then hammers home the last statement by pointing out that GT Sport does not promote street racing. Now, many (laughs) people pointed out... I just don't even know how to look right now. Yeah, many people... Go ahead, continue. (laughs) (laughs) A lot of people on Twitter pointed out their hypocrisy in this statement, considering the Toyota brand has actually been featured in Fast and Furious movies. Uh, Eventually, those tweets were deleted and replaced with an apology thread saying how they wish they could be in everyone's favorite racing game. Pulled out a few nostalgia threads like, you remember when we were in this game? Remember when we were in that game? Ah, this game is so great. And then deflected to a licensing deal with Gran Turismo. Now, what what my actual favorite line out of this entire Twitter thread was this quote. When you challenge us as to why Toyotas do not appear in your favorite racing games, we don't want to reply to you with a generic message. When you challenge us. Why not just say when you ask a simple question? Because you know what the simple answer could have been? It's a licensing problem. We are licensed to Gran Turismo. I must not run in the same circles because I didn't realize we had to pick a fight over a name brand car company not being in a game. Yeah, I I didn't. Are there are there cars like super cool and fast and that's like the best ones you can get in these games or something? I never knew. I you know I never thought about Toyota of all companies to have to defend themselves from gamers. A car manufacturer was not one of them. No. But here we are. I just okay. Yeah, I think I think I've lost the will to like even try to figure this one out. Well, I think someone was <laughs> trying to be cheeky, uh, but they came off more like a dick. So again, all the- we set them up that way though. Like, why were we attacking them in the first place? But uh, all the I mean, all the tweet said was, "Hey, why aren't there any Toyotas in the new Need for Speed?" All the equi- all the account would have had to have said licensing rights done done okay you're done you would you don't have to explain nothing else beyond that licensing issue licensing rights finished but no yeah people put their foot in their mouth too much lately Uh. Hmm. okay well now that we're done with apology well there might be another apology in here (laughs) (laughs) i'll have it next week anyway uh, the next story I have is a kind of a Big Brother situation with Xbox. According to a new report from Vice, contractors for Microsoft were able to listen to recordings captured through an Xbox unintentionally. Now, you know how sometimes you have a smart device in your house and you tell it to do something and then it argues about what you ask. And then you tell right. it again and again, and it's still not getting it. And mm-hmm. you're just like, screw it. Never mind. But then sometimes you're just sitting there minding your own business on the couch. And it's like, what did you say? And you're like, I wasn't talking to you. I wasn't talking to you. Yeah. Stop. Mm-hmm. This was the situation of the latter. Apparently, the consoles 
were listening in on conversations that they weren't exactly supposed to be privy to because it heard something and started recording thinking it was being spoken to. Ah. So okay. these contractors had this audio from conversations that were not meant for recording. But these contractors were instructed or hired, I guess, to do this job for the sole purpose of improving products that were allowed to record the audio. So kind of like a little bit of polishing of the, the software in a way. Okay. But keep in mind, now if you feel like at this point you've been violated, you sign a terms of agreement to allow yeah. this to happen. Don't we all, though? We do. Because we're like, I'm not reading that 400 no. page. You sign it. Five font document. Mm. I know. We all do it. We all, we all do sell it. our soul. But again, this is pointing out that they shouldn't have been recorded when they were. This we is, messed up, yeah. but we also put it in there as a possibility, and you gave us the little check mark and the captcha mm-hmm. where you found all of the street lights in the boxes. So 100% confirmed it was human. Sure. Mm-hmm. So it happened. So it's scary, man. Now, to all what. The stuff that can get hacked. Yeah. yeah. Now, to what degree is how personal the information was? They didn't really share the details. Um, I hope not. They did. They did kind of mention that they did hear some. I, I found this kind of amusing. Uh, contractors mentioned that there were children, like these were clearly children talking. Uh, there were children demanding their Xbox give them all the games for free, and and things just like yelling that. at their Xbox. Yeah. So you know, Xbox, give me all the games. Give me all the like games that. for free. I don't. I don't want to pay work. for that. Now, when Vice actually reached out to Microsoft about this, they said that the reviews of the voice content for product improvement, that whole scheme, ended months ago. Mm -hmm. But they do occasionally review specific recordings that are thought to violate terms of service, and that practice has long been clear in their Mm -hmm. terms of service agreement. So, they've covered themselves here pretty well yeah it's like we have a legal and i mean honestly when you're getting these devices that do all this kind of stuff i feel like you're kind of signing up for that anyway sure Mm. like obviously something is listening to some sort of algorithm like when you tell alexa to buy you something that's also telling amazon what you want to hear about Mm -hmm. and blah and so on and down the line now does that mean they should (laughs) You know, but it's like, I I don't know. Maybe I'm just too cynical of today's tech anymore. Like, I even cover my webcams when they're not in use because I know anything can be hacked and all this kind of stuff. So I'm always just, like, terrified. We have all these devices that make it too easy just to spy on you from some stranger without you knowing. Yeah, yeah. I've actually gotten... um, I, I will occasionally look into spam emails just to see if, you know, maybe something slipped through the cracks. And I've actually gotten blackmail spams, which I I found very amusing because I've gotten the same one at least 10 different times. And I was like, you know, if I if I didn't respond to you the first time, what makes you think I'm going to respond to you the other nine times you're trying to send this? They're probably just mass emailing this. Oh, yeah, for sure. But it's the same thing. It's like we've seen you on your camera. We've seen what you do. You have very good tastes. And I'm like, I don't even know what What you're talking about. Yeah. What was I doing? Just, like, if you really want to freak me out, give me specifics. Show me a picture. Right. That's what I'm I mean, saying. Don't do that. I'm not inviting people to do that. I'm just but, but if no, it's like I mean, a legit if you're gonna, blackmail. Yeah. If you're going to sit there and try to force blackmail, then show me what you got. Don't just sit mm-hmm. there and just be like, if you don't pay me X amount of dollars in Bitcoin in the next. But you know, people have done it. Oh, yeah, for sure. But they're going to release it to so many people and whatnot. And I'm like, go ahead. I don't care. (laughs) Like, who knows me? They'll just be like, okay. (laughs) Have fun with that. Yeah. You know. So, I don't know. Anyway, but yeah. Like you said, you know what you're signing up for. If you're allowing something to record your voice, it's in the terms. You can't get, get upset about it. I'm not saying it's right. Just saying. Yeah. It's saying. it's unfortunately the way of the world right now, mm. and it's probably not going to stop. No. All right, let's do a handful of quickets, because I don't have that many. Excellent. So, 
the first big quicket, and kind of relates to something we were just kind of casually talking about a moment ago, Sony Interactive Entertainment officially announced its acquisition of Insomniac Games, yeah. developers of games like Ratchet & Clank, which I thought was a hidden gem, and last year's big PS4 hit, Spider-Man. Yeah. I kind of thought they were already in cahoots, but there you go. Yeah, they are locked. I guess stuck now it's together. official. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm excited about that. I'm, I yeah, mean, good for them. I don't really, kind of like you, I didn't really notice that they weren't together. Because weren't they already making exclusives for yeah, PlayStation? So I guess I kind of already thought that was the deal. But let's see, let's see where we're going with this. Sure. Then. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Good for them. I'm all for yeah. it. They made it sound like it was a good deal for them, so... Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, the full combat pack roster was unveiled on August 21st, and as promised, uh, we got confirmation of the Joker and the Terminator, mm-hmm. along with other characters we were already aware of, like Sindel and Spawn. Spawn, yeah. So, and we also got dates that they were coming out, and that's, you know, I'm I'm a little... I don't really know. I'm I'm kind of frustrated by it a little bit because they just seem like they're tempering them out slowly. Well, they want to keep the interest in the game. Yeah, I'm but sure one the, the, the point character every month, and not even that because I think who was it? Uh, the T800 comes out in October. I don't even think there's something coming out in September. Then maybe in November we have... They're skipping September. Oh. I think. Because by the time we get to... Because we still have uh, Sindel, Spawn, and Joker. And Spawn doesn't even come out until March of next year, which is almost a full year after the game's release. That's ridiculous. Was he a highly sought after... Yes. You'd add-in? think that they, they would have put him in. Maybe that's what they're hoping for, because by then people have moved on. But if we give you Spawn... Mm-hmm. Perhaps. I, this is just my guess. It's just like they probably, as long as they can keep you wanting to come back and playing the game... No doubt. They can make more money. Mm-hmm. You know? Well, they're not making any more money from me. I've already paid for this crap, and I just want it. <laughs> but didn't you say there's stuff to purchase in-game? Yeah, but I'm not going to do that. Not going to do that. Yeah, but a lot of people will. I know, they're idiots. Anyway, I'm sorry, you're idiots. (laughs) A lot of people will, and if they keep you logging back in at least Mm. once a month for the next year, there's more of a higher chance you will, too. Now, one thing that we we kind of took from this announcement as well, uh, one, the spawn design was pretty badass. If you looked at his mask, it looked like a skull under there, which I thought was pretty cool. The Terminator is Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah. Which I was just like, holy shit, they got him. Because I expected yeah, some generic T-800 right. looking face, but no, it's him. So I'm really hoping mm-hmm. he does the voice because that would that just would be, cool. be like the cherry on top. I almost feel like you have to now. Yeah. Because it's 100% to. him. You oh, put yeah. any other voice on it, dude. Mm-hmm. Even if it's like a very Gamers good Gamers will mimic. slide into your DMs, yo. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so fingers crossed it'll be him. Since they've already gotten other actors involved. Fingers crossed. Mm -hmm. Uh, Fans are not really keen on the Joker design, I noticed. Oh, yeah? Yeah, they're calling him like... I haven't dove in. Discount bargain basement cosplay Joker, which... His face does look kind of weird. I mean, it's not the most Joker-esque Joker I've ever seen. So I'm a little... I, I didn't look at him and be like, I don't know. He's changed so much over the years. I don't know that it would have ever dawned on me that it... I don't know. I think people uh, were looking for more of a slender, you know, pointed face Joker, like more comic bookish. And I think they were really trying to find okay. a balance to where he looked like he fit within the universe, which I can understand. Yeah. So I didn't look at him and shit on it. I was just like, OK, Joker. Yeah, it would have never occurred to me to mm-hmm. even think about it a second time. But, you know, fans, we hate everything. Mm-hmm. I know. It just sucks when we change your fictional characters. <laughs> no, right? Now, speaking of fictional <laughs> characters, this announcement has confirmed the leak that happened some time ago. So, this is leading other people to wonder if the other three names that were on that list are still mm-hmm. scheduled to appear. Because there was Shiva... Mm-hmm. And Fujin, 
mm-hmm. and Ash. Yeah, and but I think I still think no. I mean, I'm not, yeah, you know, you got Arnold, man. <laughs> that's true, and that's probably where the budget went. <laughs> But still, but still, I'm sure Bruce doesn't cost as much. But um, I don't. I don't. I just want to believe that he didn't lie to us. I don't want to think that either. And but wasn't there rumors about some other chainsaw wielding character? Well, that it they seems like it that be. whole sound effect thing just it was a, a misdirect because nobody in that that roster has a chainsaw. That's what I wondered too. So I think maybe something. Slip through the maybe crack. well played maybe and there was maybe even new Bruce would play along just long enough yeah. or something I don't know I, I don't know either I I would I would I might be trying to give them too much credit <laughs> I'm I'm kind of hoping maybe possibly something will happen and he'll mm-hmm. it'll happen but for now we have no confirmation I don't know he seems like the type if he was approached and asked about it that he would 100% do it yeah I mean, I know he said he's done with he the character. He doesn't look like the type, yeah. Yeah, all he's got to do is just voice the character. You don't have to do anything. You're mm-hmm. just, they'll take care of the rest. They'll make him look like you, be awesome. You're going to be a badass. And since his public persona is all about, just pay me. Mm-hmm. I'll do whatever. Just give me money, sure. you know. I know it's a persona, or at least I'm fairly certain. But mm-hmm. it just seems like if you actually legit offered him to do it, he probably would. Sure. So, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, Dead by Daylight, their next chapter will feature the Demigorgon from Stranger Things, which is pretty awesome, as well as uh, playable survivors Nancy and Steve from the show. Team Steve! Hell yeah! And this will release sometime in September. I didn't get a release date, but I know it's in September. Yeah, it's like soon. So Soon. It looks cool. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I never would have thought about the Demigorgon, but... I'm like, yeah, that could. That hey, could getting to play that as the killer that I, 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 I don't think they've had their. They usually do like a live stream mm-hmm. to talk about new additions and stuff. I don't know if it's happened yet, but I'd be interested to see it. Yeah, I still need to see, put the uh, money down for the action. Ash thing while we're talking about Ash. Mm-hmm. I never did. I haven't played it in a while, so I've just I've not put the money. Yeah, in neither had it. I. But you know, Bruce. Yeah, I know. So I bought it. <laughs> mm-hmm. I know. Uh, Ben Decker, the head of gaming services at Xbox, said last week that while no plans are set in stone, the company would love to see the Game Pass be on all platforms. Yeah. What do you think about that? I don't think it's going to happen. But. But, um, I mean, we've got it on, what, on their console and on PC. mm -hmm. I feel like that's. I don't know. I feel like that's good enough. You sure. got both ends of the spectrum there. You got the console people and you got the PC players. Mm-hmm. We'll see. Who knows? Yeah. Like I said, I, nothing's I set in stone. So I, I feel like leaving it under your own umbrella is the smartest it thing is. to do instead of parsing out cuts to other companies because obviously they're going to want theirs. Mm-hmm. We'll see. But maybe they've crunched the numbers. I don't know. A film adaptation for Metro 2033 was announced. I mean, I guess that's good. Yeah. I, yeah. Sure. Sure. I sure. I don't know anymore. <laughs> well, while we're also on film reboots uh, or film announcements, uh, director Johannes Roberts, who directed 47 Meters Down and its sequel, stated that a film reboot of Resident Evil is in active development. I, okay. Said to, to stick closer to the games, <laughs> you know, because... That's where people divert. Like me, I just I lost interest because I didn't like the whole hyper fighting Alice or whatever. The I guess I just like I, it, I'm not the hugest market for it, especially when we're making movies out of games that had a heavy story that I've played. Mm-hmm. I've seen the story. Sure. I don't. I don't need you to tell me it again in a less interactive way. But that's just me. Right. Like, I feel like we've told the story. We've seen it in the best possible unedited form because mm-hmm. we probably had it for 20 hours or depending on the game. And you're going to shrink it down to three. I, I feel like I've already gotten the best version of it. Yeah. We'll see. But I'm just not the market for constantly making movies out of the video games that we've already seen the story to. Now, you're doing a whole other story, prequel, whatever. Fine. Okay. Maybe. But. I've already seen the story. I don't, they're I don't they're know. wanting someone to get, you know, 
people are trying to get paid. Uh, the last cricket I have is Dan Trachtenberg, who directed 10 Cloverfield Lane and episodes of hit shows like Black Mirror and The Boys, which I just finished, which was really good. Oh, yeah, yeah, I recommend yeah. that. Uh, and they left it on such a... Mm, God, I don't want to say anything. Anyway. They did a good job. They did a good job. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, he was on board to direct Sony's Uncharted film after director Sean Levy left. But now he, too, has walked away from the project. Yeah. So this, this movie's not uh, it's not taking off. Look. I mean, I feel like it's probably maybe in response to everything that's just been going on. Maybe. I don't know. I mean, I here's, know. here's my concern. Uh, I personally would love for them to not do this movie they want to do. And I would like to see Nathan Drake as we know him going on adventures like the games, but not the adventures we've seen him have in the games. Just Mm -hmm. take an Indiana Jones approach to it and say, here are the characters, and here's an artifact he's got to go after. And then wrap Nathan Drake and Sully around it. Go. Yeah. Done. I don't want to know. His I mean, I didn't mind the whole like starting when he was younger idea. Yeah, I just, I don't know. Because, you know. Yeah. I just. I mean, it feels like it, it had a definitive cap on when, when it was going to have to be done. Yeah. It, like if it was one of those where they were going to make like several sequels, like. Well, I mean, no offense to Tom Holland, but boy's not getting any younger and he might. <laughs> we keep dragging this out. Yeah. And, and. Plus, you know, he might need a job. <laughs> I just broke my heart saying that. <laughs> okay, uh, let's move on to some weird. We still love you, Tom. Yes. Let's let's do some weird news. Um, do you remember? Now, I don't know if you were here specifically, but I'm sure you, you heard it. Do you remember when we talked about Mario's nipples on this show? Yes. Okay. It was like a picture of him running on a beach in like Mario beach, Odyssey, yeah. and he was he was being Mario. He just he didn't have people a shirt. People lost their mind. Yeah, people yeah. saw his nipples and they were like, <laughs> "Oh my god, he's got nipples!" Oh well, of course. And it never even occurred to me. I was like, "He's at the beach." Okay. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, we haven't seen them before. I got to. Okay, yeah. Well, once again, the internet is concerned about nipples, but this time they are not Mario's nipples, but know. Wario's nipples. Or oh, no. more specifically, the lack thereof. Oh, he has none. Okay. Well, that was our answer. Well, Sega recently shared a video of the upcoming Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games Tokyo 2020, showcasing a range of summer games that you're going to be able to compete in. During this video, Wario and Dr. Robotnik, or Eggman, or whatever the hell people are calling him nowadays. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not hip uh. to it. You know the guy, the Robotnik guy. Uh-huh. They are standing on winners' podiums, side by side, and shirtless, like I guess they did a, a swimming match or whatever. Doctor Robotnik clearly has nipples; you see them, but okay. Wario doesn't seem to have nipples. You don't see them. Okay. So the internet went into a frenzy. They lost their minds because he has no we nipples. We really just look for everything, don't we? And they they dug in so much that one user. Uh, actually got a high-def res picture zoomed in on his areolas to see if they could find them. And you you look at his chest region, and he has, like, faintly colored areolas, but no nipples. Oh. Okay. Well, he might be sensitive to whatever happened, so I feel like us creating a storm on Twitter could just be... Bringing Wario down, man. It could be, but the, the 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 internet is in flames now because of this. But I mean, you're gonna feel really bad when you find out it, it like was something he couldn't control. Sure, and you've just been making fun of him online. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying. But here, here we go. It's not kind. No. <sighs> Why, people? Why? I don't know. We need to encourage outside again, I think. Maybe. <laughs> I think so. I think it's about time we all go outside and get Do we some have fresh another air. Pokemon Go thing happening soon? We need to encourage outside. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know what we haven't done in a while? I'd buy that for a dollar. <laughs> we have something? Yes, we do. Ooh. It's not a, not a big something, but it's a little something. Uh, 
hey, you need a notebook to make notes in, right? Sure. Okay. But maybe. Right in the title, built in. Maybe you need a special notebook. One that stands out enough that you know what it's meant for. You know, you look at that notebook and say, that's my idea book. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Might Nothing goes in here but that. Mm-hmm. Might I suggest Nintendo's officially licensed Legend of Zelda hardcover 200-page notebook complete Ooh. with battery-powered Triforce that illuminates when you press the cover. <laughs> Now, when you're looking okay. for it in the dark, you'll never lose it. It's going to elude. Well, I mean, you got to touch it first, right? Right. So I probably but you already could found be, it. You could be <laughs> feeling around for it and then, oh, ooh, yeah. Okay. You know, there it okay, goes. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, the item will come with three AG10 batteries, so you don't have to worry about buying them. They come with batteries, batteries included, as okay. they say. And it will ship for free on September 13th, but it's in limited quantities. Oh, so it's already sold out? Maybe not. How much would you pay? Oh my gosh. Is it college rule? 20 points. I mean, they didn't um, specify college rule, but. <laughs> I guess it's spiral um, binding. Oh my God. It's probably like way more than I would ever pay for a notebook for sure. Um, Cause I'm the bargain bin 50 center hmm. kind of, kind of lady, but it is a notebook. So uh, keep that in mind too. Yeah. It is still just a notebook, but it glows mm-hmm. and has batteries. I'm going to say 15 bucks. It can't be, like, stupid expensive. I mean, you're not far off. It's seventeen ninety nine, so you, you weren't far okay. off. Okay. Yeah. See? I feel like you're really just buying the Triforce thing. Pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah. And then you're just getting a notebook, a fancy notebook, because it's hardcover. Don't forget that. Oh yeah, hardcover. Mm-hmm. Well, I would. it wouldn't hold up otherwise, I wouldn't yeah. think. I, I'd love to Unless see Unless i got to look this up. Yeah. I mean, imagine the generic spiral binded notebook with that on there. Uh-huh. It's just glued on or scotch That's tape. What, right. Duct taped mm. on there. Like it's, it's so, only ten only bucks just an now. LED light. Right. I'm only selling the case mm. or the cover. All right, let me do some release dates real quick. August twenty sixth, we have Wreckfest for Xbox One. August 27th, we have Bubsy Paws on Fire for Nintendo Switch, Hunt Showdown for PlayStation 4, Knights and Bikes for PlayStation 4 and PC, Whipsy and the Lost Atlas for Nintendo Switch, Wreckfest for PlayStation 4, 8 Minutes Empire for Nintendo Switch, Esports Manager for Nintendo Switch, Decay of Logos for PlayStation 4, Control, for PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC. Looking forward to that one, man. Control. Yeah, it does look pretty good. Mm-hmm. Crystar uh, for PlayStation 4 and PC. MXGP 2019 for PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC. The Bard's Tale 4 Director's Cut for PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC. The Bard's Tale 4 Borrows Deep DLC for Xbox One. EU Din... Oh, God, here we go. EU Din... Densetsu Akatsatsu no Kat. You know what? There's a game coming out for the Nintendo Switch that I can't pronounce, so you just kind of have to go look it up. Sorry. Go look at that one. Yep. It's a, it's a name I I just I'm not gonna do and I'm not gonna do it justice and it's gonna come off very racist. So you're gonna look for the wrong thing anyway. Yeah. So <laughs> August twenty eighth, we have Pantsu Hunter <laughs> Back to the Nineties uh, for PlayStation Four and Nintendo Switch. Vambrance Cold Soul for Xbox One. Head Spun for Xbox One and PC. Whipsy and... Another one I'm looking to. Yeah, is that another one? It's another FMV. Ah. I'm, getting, I'm getting bombarded lately. No I just don't know what to do with myself. Whipsy and the Lost Atlas for Xbox One. Hookbots for Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, and PC. Subaria, Subara, Subara, Subara. There we go. They make good pizza. Subara. Subara City. Haha. <laughs> For Xbox One, AER, let's just say AER, God, these names, Uh, AER, Memories of Old for Nintendo Switch, Cameco for Xbox One, then on August 29th, we have The Dark Pictures, Man of Medan for PC, it's another one, Mm -hmm. 
Uh, Vambrant's Cold Soul for PS4 and Nintendo Switch. Lord of the Rings Adventure Card Game for PlayStation 4, Nintendo Switch, and Xbox One. Just Cause 4 Danger Rising DLC for PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC. Agent A, A Puzzle in Disguise for Xbox One and Nintendo Switch. Decay of Logos for Nintendo Switch. Heave Ho for Nintendo Switch and PC. Grand Brick Shooter for Nintendo Switch and PC. And Brunch Club for Nintendo Switch. And then on August 30th. <laughs> there's a lot of games this week. There really is. August and September. Mm-hmm. I feel like, woof. August 30th, we have The Dark Pictures, Man of Medan for PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. The Ninja Saviors, The Return of the Warriors for Nintendo Switch and PlayStation 4. River City Girls for PlayStation 4 and Nintendo Switch, which is actually, I looked that up, River City Girls. That's like a spinoff of River City Ransom, which is a game I used to like way back when. So that's wow. yeah, pretty cool, except now they're girls beating up guys and things. Okay. And you and can do it too. no, I'm not going to spoil anything. Anyway, uh, I'm going to keep going. Decay of Logos for Xbox One and PC. Blair Witch for Xbox One and PC. Astral Chain for Nintendo Switch. Remothered Tormented Feathers for Nintendo or Tormented Fathers, not Feathers, Fathers, oh, fathers. for Nintendo Switch. And Newt One for Nintendo Switch. <sighs> a lot of games. Got a lot coming out, man. Mm-hmm. It's time to play Name That Game! Okay, I went back to three, because we got a lot to talk about. And, uh... <laughs> okay, so the thing about these games, uh, the, the games themselves aren't very interesting, per se. I mean, I really wow. hate to say that. I mean, their their descriptions are just... I wouldn't... Well, I feel like they've always left something to be desired. Yeah, yeah, they do. So I've had to kind of tweak them a little bit to kind of make them sound interesting, but they are still the game that they are. So you're lying to me No, today? no, 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 no. I'm embellishing <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. these, these games a little bit more to make them sound because their names are just like, okay, but then when you hear what the games are... You're just like, what? So, But kind of like last week. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's becoming a trend. All right, so your first game. <clears throat> your animal space crew has been captured by evil robots. Survive an onslaught of robots as, you, as long as you can aboard a never-ending spaceship. Rescue your teammates, infiltrate enemy ships, and search for scrap to upgrade along the way. That's it. Okay. There was actually a lot more text for me to read, and when I started reading through it, I was like, "This is you're just repeating the same shit time and time. I mean, you're just changing up how you're saying it. But don't get hit by block, but the block will move. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> the game that was last week. Stay out way of block. So just, just remember, you're an animal space crew. And, I, and I'm and collecting garbage. Mm-hmm. So, is this game A, Planetary Penguin Panic, B, Otter Space Rescue, Oh, that's cute. C, Hogwild Beatdown, or D, The Whole Milky Way? It's like the internal struggle of like how creative they actually were. I'm going to say B. I like B. It's cute. And I'm thinking with my head, or my heart, not my head. You are correct. It Yay! is Otter Space Rescue. Gigi. It's so adorable. Yeah. Otter Space, Outer Space. Mm-hmm. See, I was trying to play off of that, and it was it was difficult, because they had the best one. Mm-hmm. So I was like, shit. They did. that This time they did, mm-hmm. finally. Mm-hmm. All right. Here, this next game, I'm telling you. Yeah. <laughs> In this game that is the sequel to the first game, you must once again... Is that how that works? Well, I kind of embellish that because, again, this is one of those that just kind of... Because you needed to know (laughs) that it was... sequel to no game. (laughs) You needed to know it was at least a sequel. Okay. You must once again play 21 
with some sexy cosplayer. But this time, she brought help. Her girlfriend. But what good does that do her? None. Because it's all about you and what you get out of her losing. Because every time your opponent loses, she must buy back her way into the game of 21. And to do that, she must choose a forfeit in order to do so. Which It's strip poker. Yeah. But she has to choose a forfeit out of the book of sexy forfeits. Uh-huh. Perhaps a spanking is in order. Maybe. Maybe she'll kiss her girlfriend in front of you. I mean, she's got to do what the book says. Maybe she'll ask for ice, a popsicle from the ice cream man. Oh, popsicle. She really wanted that. Yeah. yeah. So who knows? It's a game for perverts. Is this <laughs> A, Booty Buns 2, Ooh. B, Black Jack and Boobs 2, C, 21 and Up You 2, or D, Sexy Card Games 2. I almost feel like this one's a D, Sexy Card Games 2. Final answer? Yeah, I'm going with D. Answer is A, Booty Buns 2. Oh, uh, okay. I don't know why the way the whole thing was reading, I'm like, it's going to have some generic name. Well, you like, think? It's just going to be Sexy Card Game, mm-hmm. yeah. Okay. 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 Now, this one, uh, I I had to read over this one several times to make sure that I didn't miss something. Oh, okay. Okay. (laughs) Because I started thinking I missed something. In this game, you are whisked away to a world of mythical beasts and dinosaurs. And I'm not really sure why dinosaurs are related to mythical beasts, but whatever. The world... Well, they didn't exist. Uh, I mean, why would we not see them anymore? Yeah. The world is at war, and live theater is dying. Theater director Kit Marlowe and playwright P. Quince, I'm sure there's a joke there, have an idea to put on a play, but they need your help. The plan is simple. Put on a production of Romeo and Juliet... A new play that could cause peace among two of the most affluent families in the war. Assemble your cast, assign them their roles, and dive headfirst into the role of both playwright and director. Establish relationships, platonic or otherwise, but always awkward. As you navigate the ridiculous world of live theater. What does all this have to do with dinosaurs and mystical beasts? Hell if I know. I honestly thought I looked up the wrong game. Oh, so like never mentions it again. No. Maybe, maybe it's a theme you can use in one of your plays or something. Maybe. I don't know. And they just forgot to like make it come full circle they, at the they end of the They should have because I was like, to, what, what is this? I don't know. Anyway, so is this okay. a dashing dinosaurs and sexy centaurs? B, jaunty raptors or erotic elves. C, flamboyant fairies and the sensual stegosaurus. Or D, wendigo and julie rex. Oh, man. Wendigo and julie rex is cute. Let's just go A. I'll do another where I think they probably went a little generic-ish. You are correct. It is a dashing yeah. dinosaurs and sexy centaurs. It's like they mentioned it once in the description. They're like, we can totally name it this. Mm-hmm. All right. I hope it has nothing to do with either of those things. You know, it just, I, I like I said, I honestly thought I looked up the wrong game and I was like, what? I, I, no more mention of it beyond the kicking off point. And that's it. So I was confused. Yeah. Let's talk about Gamescom, because Gamescom yeah. happened, and while I won't say that there were any groundbreaking announcements, there were some interesting yeah. things that happened, I would say. I mean, just enough to kind of make me raise my eyebrow and go, oh, cool. You know? Yeah. So, 
first of all, I, we're going to try to break them down into, uh, I guess, sections of who said what and where who announced what. And then anything that's kind of straggling, we'll just kind of leave for the end. Uh, if you remember anything, you're more than welcome to kind of throw in. Because I'm sure I missed something. I'm sure I missed something. Yeah. I've been kind of catching some notes like all week long, yeah. so, so who knows? We'll see. I'm sorry if I missed anything. If if there was a game you were excited about and I didn't talk about it, I'm sorry. I'm trying trying to get everything. <laughs> um, first of all, let's talk about Google since they kicked off the whole thing with their Stadia Connect ahead of Gamescom. And I think people were hoping for maybe more understanding of the service, more details about the service, and all we really got was a showcase of the games that are coming to the service and then developers of those games talking about their game and the service and how great it's going to be. So I never really felt like we got any details. It was. Just... I feel like we've got all the details about it we need, though. Like, what more were people asking for? Like, I feel like I get it. I think people are needing to be sold on it more. Not uh, just the concept. And that's as what a whole. they were doing, right? Like, here's all the games you can play. Yeah, but Isn't I think that part of for the, pitching yourself. I think for the layman, for the most part, there's a lot of other intricate details that they need to explain. Because if I said, "Hey," Like to my mom, hey, you can play this game on my phone. How? You know, I internet the but an internet connection and signing up for the service. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Like, I feel like when they announced it at E three, like. I get it. Yeah. And then what? A few months later, they announced their pricing plan and you could be a founder's person or this, that, or the other. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like I get it. I, I do. don't know. I do. I don't know. I just, I, I don't know if they sold themselves properly this time around. I mean, granted, okay. they, that might not have been their intention. Maybe they just wanted to be like, hey, we're still coming. This is happening. Look how excited people are. Because I would have just looked at it as we've explained what it is. Now here's all the games you can play on mm -hmm. it. And, you know. And because of what we've said before is why you should choose our service to play these games. Sure. So I, I, I guess I'm not really sure what I was looking forward to either from this, but mm -hmm. I guess I was looking for just maybe a, a maybe another talking point or two just to be like, hey, we've already told. Maybe the they announced everything too early. And so they should have trickled out more to keep the interest in. Maybe that's where they, yeah, they felt exactly was telling us everything at mm -hmm. once. So that was that was essentially all Google did that I saw, and there were no exclusives, were there? No, the, a lot of the games that they showed these were games that we had seen, we know are coming. I'm a little frightened for that. Yeah, so well, not like terrified or whatever, but like if they start to get exclusives, that's that's going to be rough for people to get on board sure. with because again, this is a service I don't see everybody being able to utilize for no, a while. No, no. So I think they need to stay away from that deal for now. It's, I it's, mean, whether they do or not is not their problem, I guess, whether you can. But, like, no. you, I don't think you're going to see a sales spike from it. Sure, I mean, no, if no. I don't have internet that runs it, I don't have internet that runs it, and that's just how it is. Yeah. Now, on uh, Sony's front, <clears throat> I think the biggest thing that Sony talked about was Death Stranding. I think that's what everyone was looking forward yeah. to seeing. We got some actual cutscenes. With some explanations as to what's going on in the game outside yes. of just, you know, shots here and there and be like, I don't know what's going on. You know, we and Norman Reedus peeing a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I, I found interesting that that was a point of focus. Well, because well, a little fast and loose with the word interesting, but yeah. you know, like, OK, well, I mean, with the pee, you can grow mushrooms and you can use it as a yeah. weapon. I mean, pee, right? Yeah, Who exactly. wants to be hit with P? Not me. No, I mean, that's, well, not, you can't say not everyone, but sure. I would say mm -hmm. maybe a majority of people would not. Right. Yes. Uh, we, a very small group. <laughs> <laughs> we got a little bit more information about the baby, or as they referred to it, the BB. The BB. And I love it. When when I heard uh, him say BB, I was like, oh, BB. Like, I know what it stands for now. At first, I was like, oh, he's being adorable, calling it a BB. Mm -hmm. Like, I see people like, I love you, BB. BB. You know, like they're being cute. And then someone told me what it stood for. And I went, oh, I was really kind of hoping he was just calling everyone. <laughs> and we actually got to see uh, Guillermo. Guil Guil Guillermo. See, I wasn't even going to try to say his name. That When I said him saying BB, I was just hoping everyone knew because I screw up his name all the time. Too. Well, normally I don't have that problem, but it just it, it 
punch me in the face, Guillermo del Toro. Toro. His character in the game is named Dead Man. He was talking to Norman Reedus' character about the BB. And mm-hmm. I'm that was not his voice. I'm saying that up front. If, no? if I'm wrong, then I'm sorry to, to say. Why would it be? It just doesn't, does not sound like him. Did not sound like him at all. I've heard that man Maybe speak. Maybe he knows how to do voices. Well, it wasn't him. I stand okay. by that. Okay. Um, then obviously we got, you know, Norman Reese's character pissing. Uh, but there was the, we, we found <laughs> out that the uh, the BB actually uh-huh. helps him see ghostly visages known as BTs. Okay. And I I don't know why this matters yet, but... That's something that it does. Well, I feel like it was kind of more like his tether to the other side, air quotes. And that's that was the other hook to it, is they also showed another video featuring a actor, Margaret Qualley. She's playing a character named Mama. Her character mm-hmm. has a baby. They didn't say BB, they said baby. Born on the other side, which my at that point I would be like, so it's going to be Norman Reedus' BB. I could be wrong, mm-hmm. but that would exactly be where my head's going. It's like, oh, that's going to be the baby he's connected to. Yeah. Uh, but we don't know that for sure. I'm just making speculation. But she can't move because of the baby's condition on the other side. So I'm assuming she's paralyzed in a manner of speaking because of this. I don't know. It's weird. Yeah. Because they even mention interdimensional breastfeeding. I don't know if this game will be amazing, but it will be memorable. I will say that. Yeah. Like, it's something we're all going to be talking about mm. one way or the other. It's like, do you remember that weird game where you could pee and breastfeed over WTF time and space? Moment. Yeah. Yeah. Weird. I mean, I hope it does well just because, holy crap, we've been we've been on this game for a while. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I'm so. interested enough to check it out at some point. Yeah. I'm glad it's not... I don't think I'm a day one person, but uh, we'll see. Mm, I'm glad it's not stealth-based, because uh, there's only so much... Well, I think, wasn't there stealth elements, too? I mean, not... Well, he did... Obviously, it's main focus, but... Yeah, Kojima said it was not going to be Metal Gear-esque, which I'm fine with. Metal Gear was fine when I was playing it. I don't want... I just... I'm not in the mood for that. But you played it. Let's... You want something different. Yeah. Um... Now, outside, I of, find it impressive he can walk around with that huge backpack and not constantly fall down. Right, and that ladder. <laughs> uh, uh, outside of that, there were only two. Uh, there may have been other things. Again, I'm trying to uh, nitpicking out the the big things. Uh, the other thing that was uh, interesting that they kind of announced there was a teaser uh, release showcasing the next Monster Hunter collaboration happening within the Iceborne expansion of Monster Hunter World. And this will be a tie-in to Horizon Zero Dawn's own expansion, The Frozen Wilds. So they're taking okay. these two Frozen Worlds and clashing them together, which, I mean, that's a smart move. You've already done one crossover. Do another one. Yeah. So, awesome. And I'm sure that will be PlayStation only, because, obviously, PlayStation. And... This was this was the uh, the more interesting news that I, I caught out of the uh, their their presentations or whatnot. PlayStation announced plans to produce games for PC. Yeah, they said they're going to start yeah. small with an indie title called Ready Set Heroes, and while other titles, small and large, are being explored for to see if they are viable options. Sean Layden did kind of specify that the PlayStation platform must come first, but they are yeah. looking into expanding. I feel like maybe this is a cry to what if people can't afford our console? And that's not a bad thing. I mean, I mean, it's not a bad idea. You know me. I, I'm all about it coming mm-hmm. to PC for sure. Um, but that, that just kind of made me wonder. Like, Sure. This is still going to be a way they can still make their money off of their games. Maybe when we're not able to throw down 800 bucks on a console, we can still maybe spend $60 on your digital game. Mm-hmm. And I think I think it would be kind of smart if they would take older titles 
and use those as kind of start testing yeah, it out. Just like lay yeah. it out there. And it's like, this is an old, the, like the original God of War. I know that's an old, old yeah. title, but just be like, hey, now you can play it on PC. There you go. And then yeah. I'm sure there will be people out there say, screw that. I won't play this old game. But if you. Yeah, well, nobody's ever going to be happy. But if you've never played it, if you've never played it and you've only been on PC, now you get to play it. Yeah. You know? No, I think it's a great game. I don't know how well it held up over the years. No, I yeah, haven't yeah. gone back to it since it was brand new. Because what, PlayStation 2, I think, was the first well, one. Well, they could, so they could release. It's been a while. They could release the remastered version. Remaster it. Sure. I mean, in my head, it seems like it would still be great fun. But again, I've not sat back down, Mm -hmm. what, 10 years or how long it's been. I mean, I I think Uh, it holds up. I think I played the remastered version a few years back, and it's still pretty good. So Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that that's what they're going to do. I'm just saying test it out with with games that are already established. You've made your money on those games. You're not going to lose anything letting them loose into the wild, you know, and onto PC platforms or whatever. Try it. Give it a go. Let people who've yeah. never played these games, maybe even set up a poll and say, if we were to release one of these older games on PC, which would you want? And just mm-hmm. see. And if fans say, screw you, I don't want none of your garbage, then be like, well, then we won't do it then at all. Yeah, the hell with you. Then we won't do it. And move yeah. on. Because I could see that happening. Uh, Microsoft uh, showed a few things here and there. They showed, uh, I think their big thing was Gears... Of War 5, they yeah. showcased the solo campaign of the game. Uh, there was even... I think they, they announced, like, Terminator DLC previously, and then they showcased a new uh, bit of DLC in Sarah Connor, which I thought was kind of okay. neat. So yeah. we've got... Uh, why am I forgetting her name? Linda Hamilton, there we go. Looking like she there does in the, the upcoming I was movie. just staring at you like I didn't remember either right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, they also released trailers for Blair Witch, which is coming out soon. Empire of Sin, which looks kind of cool. Yep. Uh, Wasteland 3, Greedfall, and some others that I just, I don't, I, I, I did my digging as far as I could. Yeah. And then they started kind of to mesh together. Um, But I did, I did get to see gameplay trailer, or gameplay, not really a trailer, for Battletoads. And... Mm-hmm. I don't remember what I don't remember why my initial reaction to it was meh originally, but when I looked at it this time, I was like, "Huh, okay." Looks like a lot of fun, eh? Yeah, I think I like the yeah. uh, artistic direction they took because it's mm. almost like a living comic book because they're not doing voice acting; they do like the little voice bubbles, like you do in comics, but. Yeah. The characters are very animated, very well drawn. Everything around it just it's like a big cartoon, so that already kind of draws me in. Now, comparatively to something like Cuphead, when they nailed down every single detail, I won't say that they did that as far as how integrated it all seems, but it still looks pretty damn impressive for the design. So I'm not shitting on it, I'm just mean I feel like Cuphead did it just a step better, <laughs> but they still yeah. did a great job at what they've designed. So it looks it looks pretty awesome, but I don't know if it... I'm not going to rush out and grab this game, I, but I am sure. impressed by it. Like, I would check it out. But it did also showcase that they brought back those bullshit driving segments where you can run <laughs> into walls. Yeah. It looked great, but it, it was just like, man, this crap again... <clears throat> Granted, you can see where you're going this time versus how that other game worked, but still, no one liked those driving segments. They were garbage. Anyway. Well, they still keep putting swimming in games, too. So what are you going to do? Yeah. But that's that's really all I saw of uh, Microsoft, unless you saw anything. Yeah. No, I think you about hit the ones that I uh, heard about. Mm. So uh, As far as Nintendo, uh, they actually got a previous xbox exclusive title coming to the console ori and the blind forest Mm -hmm. so like i said nintendo and microsoft they're they're chumming up some they're together they just like they're they're fooling around they're not making it public yet but they're fooling around but they're well i mean they're not hiding it too well either Mm -hmm. so it's like 
I think they're just letting you know, like this is happening, mm-hmm. and I mean you. And then when we officially announce, we'll all be like, "Well, I thought you already were." Yeah. Or like I don't even. It's not even a big deal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So there's that, and then uh, they're also getting the switch is getting ports for Super Hot and Hotline Miami, which is cool. Good, Interesting. Good for them. Uh, the yeah. Witcher 3 Wild Hunt is coming out on October 15th. I don't know if that release date was announced prior. I think it was just known to be coming out later in the year, but officially... We knew it was coming to the Switch, yeah. yeah officially October 15th. Uh, and also, gameplay of Link's Awakening, the new Legend of Zelda remake, uh, mm-hmm. got to be seen on the showcase floor, and it was being played on the Nintendo Switch Lite, so... It got to be seen in action, and I'm, I'm assuming everybody was... I didn't hear anything negative about the Switch yeah. Lite. So, yeah. There you go. This is going to be yeah. their brand from now on. They're going to be Switch all the way. You got the Switch. You can. It's a console, and you got the Switch that is not a console. It's your... I know that they keep saying, we're not getting rid of the 3DS, but you just did. Yeah. You did. Yeah, no, it's... it's I would get come to terms with it. Start prepping yourself now, people mm-hmm. who are still using it. Yeah, you you have clearly just created a brand new handheld that you want people to take. Mm-hmm. Just this is the life now. Yep. Uh, Sega did a, did a few little announcements. They showcased like we mentioned prior the Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games, Tokyo twenty twenty. What I actually found interesting about this is they actually showcased. Uh, retro sports where the characters are little 8-bit sprites and I thought that was kind of cool to see the yeah. old versions of the characters interacting versus what we see now. So I was like, oh, that's, yeah. that's neat. Uh, they also announced Humankind which kind of has this Age of Empires esque aesthetic to okay. it, I suppose. And then I think the biggest thing that people were more excited for was the Yakuza Remastered Collection, yeah, exclusive to the PS4, features parts 3, 4, and 5, and will feature newly revised scripts and content previously exclusive to the Japanese release. Yeah, so if you've, no, people are psyched about that. I think, what, the third one's already done, mm-hmm. right? And then we're just waiting on the other one, so... I think it's I think it's cool. I mean, the, I feel like we've seen it coming because, like, with the last few Yakuza games, they've been I'm, getting ported over. So, yeah. I mean, for me, and ported well, sure. And, and for me, I've never. I know how I've played a Yakuza game, but I've not played mm-hmm. a Yakuza game fully. It was like at yeah. the. They're all huge commitments. Yeah, it was. It was during the transition between PlayStation Three and Four for me. I think Yakuza yeah. three. I think was or was it five? That was a free PlayStation game. Yeah, whichever one it was. Yeah, it was like I got it on the PlayStation three. I thought, well, I'll give this a try because I was in mid transition. But then something new came out on the PlayStation four, and I was just like, well, I want to go play this thing over here. And I just I never went back to it. And it wasn't that yeah. I didn't want to. It's just my PlayStation's over here where I want to be versus this game in here where I don't want to be. So it was hard. Yeah. So, I, I would love to try them out. I've heard nothing but good things, and I'm sure I've heard a few negative things, but I'd like to try them out. Yeah. Uh, EA just showed off Need for Speed Heat in FIFA 20, which one of their FIFA games, I'm, I'm assuming it was the FIFA game, it's got, uh, or was it a basketball game? I don't know. They all look the same. There was a game that had uh, Idris Elba in it, but it was a sports game. Oh yeah, one of those sports ball games. See, all these he play? ball sports. He, he doesn't play sports. I don't know. He's an actor. He's an actor. He's an actor. Why is he in this sports game? Who knows? I don't know. It's it's the very hip thing to do as a big actor right now is to be in a video game. Mm-hmm. Well, like you said earlier, getting FMVs with higher profile mm-hmm. actors. So it's the way to go. We, yep, we are. Now on the Square Enix side, obviously. Their big thing was Marvel's Avengers. Yeah. And what they showcase is about like a 20 to 30 minute demo of the opening play sequence known as A Day. Mm-hmm. I'm not even going to touch that. Uh, they were allowing, essentially, through this opening sequence, it's almost like a playthrough of each character letting you know hey, 
this character plays like this, and this character plays like this. So you've got Thor. He's being all hammer E. That's the one I saw was Thor. Yeah, so he smashes and shocks people with his hammer, and then Hulk goes all smashy smash, and Iron Man goes all blasty blast, and Widow's all bangy bangy, and Cap is all tactical E. You know, they all have their different play styles, so each character feels unique, and I respect yeah. that. I, that's cool. Uh, they even said that there will be two types of missions in the game. You'll have a story-driving mission that kind of pushes the narrative along. Then you'll have like these co-op missions where you can kind of build your stats and your skill tree for your characters, and each one will kind of be character-based. So each character has their own time to shine. So you won't just say, well, I just want to play as the Hulk. No, you're going to have to play as everybody. So you better get used you to it. You have to get on board with it. Yeah. But they talked about skill trees and how you can build the characters differently. So if you want Thor to be like a tank, you can do that. If you want him to be a little bit more tactical, you can do that. So I think that's kind of cool. You can build your characters the way you want them. Uh, they also confirmed additional characters like Miss Marvel and Goose the Cat from Captain Marvel, which I would assume that Captain Marvel will also be in it. But here, yeah, yeah this is one of my hang-ups here, Okay. I I saw them say, ah, Goose is confirmed. The cat. (laughs) This is a hang-up. This is a nerd hang-up of mine. The cat's Mm -hmm. name is not Goose. Okay? In the comic books, she calls him Chewy. Not Goose. Why would you change that? Well, I'm sure that, you know, they were trying to adhere to the... Well, she's an Air Force pilot, and Goose a Top Gun, and ah, ha, ha, oh. trying to do all that for the movie, but Chewie, sure. man. It's not like you don't own Star Wars. Chewie. Oh, yeah, that's true. I like... What's uh, going on there? Yeah, I like the Chewie thing. But who knows? I don't know. I'm just a little... It's one of those things I'm nitpicking. Uh, plus... While we were all kind of aware that Taskmaster was going to be the primary villain, it also showcased a new villain in Abomination. Uh, if you don't know who that is, it's kind of like a evil Hulk, which that's simplifying it, but yeah. it's that's what he is. He's the Hulk with fins. An abomination. Abomination. Uh, and some speculation has led some to believe that there's another villain lurking in the shadows that has not yet been announced, considering that the organization known as AIM, which stands for Advanced Idea Mechanics, was mentioned by a developer, and said organization is usually headed, and that pun is intended, by Mm. MODOK, who is a man... That was mutated. If you don't know who Modok is, I'm going to break it down for you. He's a man who was mutated into a large head with tiny arms and legs, hence the pun, headed. Ah. So he's got, got this it. big brain and big head, and he needs a hover chair to kind of support himself, but he's hyper intelligent because he's got this big brain. And of course, yeah. He was so smart that he took over AIM uh, before this transformation. He was just one of their lackeys. Now he runs the show. And MODOK, if you don't know, stands for Mental Organism Designed Only for Killing. MODOK. Sure. Sure. So we don't know if that's true or not, but we'll see. Uh, yeah. But yeah, they. Uh, I mean, it. I'm still, I, I don't want to say I'm not sold on the game yet. There's just something about the game that just feels wrong to me thus far. I want to be... Like, when I looked at Spider-Man, I was looking at it going, God, this game is going to be amazing. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Like, I just knew it in my heart. So much so that I pre-ordered it months in advance. Knowing that anything could happen and it could turn out to be the biggest (laughs) herd. But I I felt it. I'm not feeling it with this game. I don't know why. I want to be wrong. I don't know. But I'm just, I'm not feeling it, so... I don't, know. I don't know. I hope it's good. I'm not as invested. No. But. I wa- yeah. I, I don't know. Anyway, but the only other thing that I saw coming out of Square Enix, and there may have been more, but uh, they announced a release date for Final Fantasy VIII Remastered, uh, and that will be on September 3rd, so next week, people. There you go. <clears throat> busy, busy couple months. Mm-hmm. And all I've got left are just uh, kind of nitpicky things that I happen to notice. Uh 
as the show was going on. Didn't really feel like they fit into any one category. The Kerbal Space Program 2 was announced, which... Yeah, I saw that. You know, when that okay. when that game came was announced, I, I didn't really feel like... I was like, oh, that'll be one of those that just gets forgotten. But it actually kind of had a little following. So, good mm-hmm. for it for getting a sequel. Yeah. Uh, a trailer for Beyond a Steel Sky, which is a sequel to a game called Beneath a Steel Sky, which I have no idea about, but it kind of looked neat. Nope. So, good, good for it. Uh, you you kind of mentioned this already up top. Uh, Erica, uh, yes, was actually released upon its announcement. It's like you can play it now. Yeah, it's like oh okay cool. Yeah, which kind of neat. It was really cool. Yeah, I can't wait to try that mm-hmm. one out. This is this is a sequel that uh, I need to go and play. The original Little Nightmares Two was announced, and I, I need to go oh, yeah. and play the original because I keep hearing. I, I liked it. I think. I keep not enough to continue buying all its DLC and everything that came out, but mm-hmm. one time through, I was fine with it. Yeah, I, it's it's one of those I've looked at numerous times, like oh, I really want to play this, but I've just I've never put the money down for it. So yeah, I'll get to it eventually. Um, gameplay was seen for Ilphonic's upcoming Predator Hunting Grounds, and I don't I I don't know how I feel about it. <laughs> Yeah. Because I, it's supposed to be in the vein of what they did, like the PvP P Hunter versus Hunted Friday the 13th, Dead by Daylight, but I'm not quite sure how. Because it seemed like the Predator stayed in the trees the entire time, so I don't really see how that's... I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, we'll have to see more, I think. Mm eventually now that probably just makes a good trailer sure. good cinematic so we'll see and the uh last thing that i have i wasn't expecting to see anything i wasn't expecting to watch this and get sucked in even more mm-hmm. but there was a long play uh of a pre-alpha demo of man eater shown and i really want to play this game now this is the oh, game wait. about the shark yeah. Where you play as the shark. And after listening to the developers talk about it, watching it play, I want to play it. Because I thought it was just going to be something, oh, you get to play as a shark, and you get to eat people, and that's it. And I was just like, yeah, I guess that would be fun for a little while, and then you'd get bored of it. Mm -hmm. But they said it's so much more than that. You know, you have all these areas that you can swim in, obviously. Uh But here's the kicker. In the game, you are essentially vying for dominance within each of these areas. And there is an apex predator within each of these areas that you must defeat to become the alpha predator in that area. Mm -hmm. So, and it's not like you can just go up to said predator and just be like, well, I'm going to beat you. You have to build your strength or i guess through some skill tree or what have you and uh-huh. prepare yourself to defeat this creature like one in particular they showed is you were swimming in the swampy area and you about what in the shark went into this uh, big tunnel and this huge freaking gator showed up and he was like nope nope <laughs> and backed away and i was like "Ooh." That would be interesting to see. So, uh, yeah, other things going on in there. Yeah, so it's right. almost like... Maybe I'll look into it more. Just the whole premise was, yeah, for me. Exactly, but. yeah. It was... That's kind of what I was thinking, too, because when they initially showed it off, it was just like, eh, you know, I guess it would be kind of neat. But now, after looking into it more and actually getting to see, hear them talk about it and see it in action, I'm like, all right, you're 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 selling me on it. Keep going. Um, so it's kind of like gang wars. They were even showing this one area, which is really weird because apparently the people you're going to be killing, you're not going to be, or eating, I should say. It's not like you're just going after innocent people. The people you're going after are also terrible people because you swim into this one. That makes you feel better. Yeah, I guess so. Because you swim into this one area and it's like a dumping ground for bodies. Like, these crime lords are just dumping bodies into this one section of water, and it's terrible. Mm -hmm. But, hey, you know what? You're taking down the the crime in in the city. It's like uh, uh, Dexter's dump spot Mm -hmm. or something like that. But if nothing else will sell you on this game, might might I throw out one last little tidbit? 
that I got, which I thought, okay, you're making this even more enticing. Mm -hmm. Comedian Chris Parnell from Saturday Night Live and other things is going to be the narrator of the game. As you swim around, he's going to be giving you little factoids about the shark. Oh, nice. And how accurate they may be. They they might not all be 100% accurate, but it's going to be humorous. Like when he approached the shark, he's like, that is a, or the the gators, like this fierce animal, uh, you know, looks dangerous. And maybe you're not quite ready to take this on at this particular moment. So how he presents it, it's humorous, just from what I heard. All so right, I'm, good, yeah. That was, that was an added bonus. I was like, all right, all right, yeah. So I'm hoping this will be one of those surprise games where mm-hmm. you're just like, this isn't going to be good. And you play it and you're like, this is actually pretty good. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Yeah. I always want games to come out to actually be good games. Sure. You know? Mm-hmm. I mean, that's the least we can ask for. Right. <sighs> But that's that's all the Gamescom stuff that we had. If we missed anything, yeah. you can shout at us on Twitter because that's what people do. They don't do that specifically. I'm just saying that's what people do on Twitter. They shout things. Be like, how dare you forget things? It's true. Yeah. So, but uh, I've got nothing else. That's our show. Yeah. And like I said, you can you can hit us up on uh, Twitter sometime at Super Mega Crash. You can send us an email at supermegacrash at gmail dot com. You can find us on Instagram to view our weekly icon art. Support the show by pressing a like button, leaving reviews on your preferred platform, and even going to patreon.com slash pencil and paper productions. You can tell your friends to find us on the Pencil and Paper Podcast Network found on Apple Podcasts, Podbean, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, and even youtube.com slash pencil paper productions. Thank you so much for listening. I am Stephen White. I'm Lacey Finley. Join us again next time, Super Mega Crash Siblings. But until then, game on. This has been a Pencil and Paper Podcast Network production.